Okay, thank you. Well, we've got one more interview we want to share together. And this was a very different situation in the sense that the, the couple we're going to interview now have children with them. And so they've had them in lockdown with them. They've been doing homeschooling at the same time as everything else. And that's given rise to a whole raft of different issues. So let's go one more time to have a chat to see how people are coping in lockdown. Hello, my name is Andy Markham and this is my wife Holly and we're from an organisation called Kids UK. And we had three daughters, one that's almost a teenager and two under five. So as you can imagine, lockdown has been pretty challenging in times. We've had some fantastic highs and some really challenging lows. Uh, for us, going into lockdown meant that we had a mindset that we were going to use this time and felt it was a God-given time to spend time as a family before our youngest started school and we wouldn't have the same amount of time. However, the lows have been really challenging for us. Um, trying to juggle ministry, trying to juggle family, trying to juggle homework, trying to deal with the worries and the concerns of COVID, uh, whether we'd get it, our children would get it, or even our wider family has been extremely challenging. So we have uh, three points, A, B and C, that we would like to share with you today that have helped us along the way. So A, we're going to use the word acknowledgement. And for me, it was just acknowledging it's OK to not be OK. Yeah. Um, I took great comfort in that story of, of Moses, who was a, a great leader, someone in, in ministry like we are uh, running stuff. And when you're in ministry, you feel like sometimes you have to just be OK. You have to say I'm fine because you've got a group of people yeah. that are looking to you for support. Mm -hmm. Well, Moses was there and his people were in battle and he had his hands up. When his hands lowered, they were losing the battle, etc, etc. Mm -hmm. And it's his friends that held him up. And it's OK to not be OK. So for me to acknowledge that I'm struggling, I'm finding uh, I'm striding, it's hard not going to work. I'm finding it hard not to uh, mix with people and not have that feedback from from congregations and support groups and work and schools that I visit. Um, it's okay to acknowledge that I'm not okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, for, for you that was quite hard being a man. I think it's hard to acknowledge those things, but once you had, Definitely. it did um, help to, to move forward and to... Partic particularly as being a, a, a male and a yeah. dad, and it's not trying to sound sexist, but I had this mindset, oh, I've got to provide, I've mm. got to keep it strong, yeah. I've got to be the one together. And like I say, have seen Moses uh, in that story to say, actually, I'm tired. Mm. Uh, gave me permission to just say, yeah. look, I'm tired. Um, yeah. And it's a little bit like in a rowing boat. The two of us could be rowing our rowing boat. And sometimes I'm tired or Holly's tired. It's yeah. okay to acknowledge that with each other yeah. and me to take the two oars and row and then ta and take over and take turns. So I just encourage you, if you're not okay, it's okay to not be okay mm -hmm. and to acknowledge that and try to share that with some people that are around to yeah, support. Yeah, definitely don't stay in that place, keep keep moving forward. Um, I think for me, um, I run um, a community dance group, which is very much the heart of it, is not really about the dance, it's about connecting with the children, having a relationship, um, learning, to, teaching them about Jesus, being Jesus-like to them, that they have a safe place to come to. So for me, like I can imagine um, most of us feel working in a ch children's ministry that um, you, you can't just walk away from it and just forget. And these children were on my mind so much because we couldn't meet anymore. And I was just in, I was quite upset and I really found it hard. And I was like, I can't, I'm just finding it really hard not being able to see these young children, these young people that need, that need it. Um, so that was really challenging at first. So um, we came up with lots of ways to to um, overcome that. So we got a um, Facebook page that the children can connect on and, the, and their parents as well. We have a WhatsApp Zoom. group, we could do Zoom, and that's all great and it is good. We It, it, it has had amazing blessings. So for example, some of the parents that don't drop their children off have been able to connect. So that's been a real blessing. So now um, the family has grown even more, but it has still been challenging not being able to see these children face to face. 
That then brings us to our second point, what is the B, the balance. And I know for me, uh, there can be a, a, a real pressure that I'm still employed in this pandemic and I've got supporters financially supporting the work for you, maybe your church, your congregation. And there can be a pressure that I've got to still prove that I'm working. Uh, for mm -hmm. you, it was I'm proving I'm doing all this kind of stuff. And there can be quite a, a, a pressure. And if you're not careful, for me, it got where we were working and working and working. Yeah. And we had to get that balance between saying family, schoolwork ministry work etc etc yeah, et cetera. yeah. Um, in the end i mean it sounds silly but we had to put a family timetable together with because we were just so like doing so much stuff for our ministries that we almost didn't even though we were together so much we didn't have time we weren't spending quality time so we literally put a, fa a family timetable together so our eldest seller knew exactly what was coming what we were all doing mm -hmm. we all knew what was happening um and that and it was just like a weekly timetable and we know that things changed so that you know it wasn't a pressure to say on this timetable but that that really helped yeah. us didn't it and then that brings us to our final point that is connect and i think for us we really missed the connecting with family mm. with friends but also connecting with church uh, when you are just uh, such locked in lockdown in your own home, you can feel very uh, disconnected, very isolated. And we had to learn how to reconnect mm. in this pandemic. Mm. So that was a matter of uh, using the technology, the Zooms, the telephone calls, whatever it means, whatever means we can to reconnect with with church families, with friends. Um, and, and again, be acknowledge where we're at and be honest with these people. Mm. But also yeah. to not just rely on our church and, and the churches that are watching online to feed us spiritually. We felt that actually part of this was we needed to get that balance and in that timetable to give us time as individuals, yeah. but also as a couple to say we yeah. want to meet with God. What does God want us to do with this? Mm. And I'm not saying we're not saying, oh, we've got it all right. It's a balance. <laughs> the thing with balancing is you're always moving. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, we, we still have tough times. We still yeah. have low days. But I can guarantee the times when we're having our low times, it's because the balance is, is not in place. Yeah, yeah. And usually that comes back down to us stopping and saying we need to connect with each other. We need to communicate better. We need mm -hmm. to communicate with the kids better. We need to spend time with the family. We need to stop work yeah. or we need to do more work. Or most likely, we just need to stop and reconnect with yeah. God put a podcast on, grab the guitar, do a bit of worship or put a CD on and mm -hmm. uh, just reconnect and take yeah. the moment, just, you know, just, just the stillness to say, stop, God, what are you teaching me in this time? Yeah.